Welcome to our Wellness Wednesday Health Show. My name is Dr. H. Kala Hewlett, President of Back Pain and Sciatica Center of Texas, Houston Neuropathy Solutions, and Houston Stem Cell Solutions. The goal of the show is to bring you health and wellness solutions from leading health experts that you can apply in your life starting today. Today's topic is health and nutrition. Why are we discussing this now? At a time when more and more people are eating at home, nutrition has become very, very important. It's been said that as Americans, we have what's known as a SAD diet, S-A-D, which stands for Standard American Diet, which is lots of processed foods, sugary foods, a diet that's high in meat, and unfortunately, a diet that many health experts says is one of the leading causes of obesity, of cancer, of heart disease, of diabetes, and so many other health problems. So I'm really excited to have our guest today, who is a nutrition and health expert. Now, I first met her nine years ago when a mutual health healthcare friend introduced us, and we worked together in bringing down a gourmet raw chef into the area, and he did workshops in the area. He did a workshop at my practice for our patients. We even had a gourmet, a five-course gourmet raw dinner at my house in which she was involved in and helped out there with this chef. Chef Belive was his name, and I remember thinking at the time, how in the world do you make a gourmet raw meal? In my head, all I could think of was salad. How can I have salad for five courses? I was pleasantly surprised that there were five delicious courses that were completely raw, delicious, and healthy. So our guest today is April, also known as Sweet Mama. A little bit more about her. She is the executive chef at the Deer Lake Lodge Spa and Resort here in Montgomery. She's also, and I may pronounce this wrong, Kundalini Yoga and Meditation Teacher. And as a health enthusiast, April, also known as Sweet Mama, shares her passion and love through pure essential oils infused, infused into healthy raw recipes and organic living. She also offers grocery store tours to clients so they can learn how to quickly upgrade their health, making decisions with just a few simple changes. April is a mother of three, and her greatest gift is to be a healer and nurturer of her family. She also enjoys teaching yoga, juicing, raw food, and essential oil classes. Her mission is to share love and inspire a journey of great health within you. April, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Now, tell me a little bit more about how did you first get into health? Great question. So I grew up in Southern California and uh, my parents were hippies. So somewhat of a healthy lifestyle growing up. I completely rebelled against it as a teenager and a young woman. And um, when I had my first son and I was sitting in the doctor's office, I had fear that came over me and I was worried about what the doctor was gonna do to my baby. <laughs> And I realized that um, I had this moment of clarity where I realized that I had everything I required and it was going to be just fine. And uh, I really went back to my natural ways, a lot of the things that I had learned growing up. And I started doing my own research. And I learned a lot in that period of time. And that was, that was my motivation to get into a healthy lifestyle was having my first son who is 22 today. Today, oh my goodness! Well, well please not tell today, happy but but to, yes. but but right currently, you said something which I think is really important for all of our listeners. It sounds like your parents provided at least a foundation that you were able to fall back upon um, when you were pregnant with him, and so I just think how important it may be for parents now, without realizing it, they may be laying the foundation whether it be a good foundation or a bad foundation nutritionally for years to come. What are your thoughts on that? Exactly. Absolutely. They say same sex parent is the most influential person in a child's life. And so it's super key for us as parents to, um, to be fully present and also to lead by example, right? It's not just what we say, it's what we do. And um, I really feel like that, is much more important than anything we say. It's really what we're doing on the regular, on a daily basis. So um, yes, for sure, uh, it did lay a foundation and, and it had me interested in um, alternative health and it had me interested in 
uh, what we like to call original health, really going back to doing things quite different from the way that everyone else and the direction everybody else was going. Um, and that's one thing that I teach my kids, you know, if everybody else is doing it, then maybe look into another option and, and see what else is available um, and absolutely question everything. Uh, my family taught me early on to question everything growing up, you know, question our parents, question our pastors, question our teachers, question everything. Just don't question yourself, you know, really find that intuitive nature within yourself and um, be tr true to that. And that's uh, definitely been something that has helped me in parenting my three sons. I think that's some great advice. Now, how did you transition from having your first child and, and saying, okay, this is something that I'm passionate about personally. How did you transition that into more of a career and all these things that you've done over the years? It just happened naturally. Um, at home, I was just doing my own thing. And I was really learning along the way, you know, making lots of mistakes as parents do. I mean, we're all human. Um, and really learning from my mistakes and learning and seeing how my body felt and see how my ch seeing how my child would react to certain foods. Um, early on, we just started, you know, taking out all the things that we knew were bad, right? Um, and I had moved from Southern California to Texas with my husband's job. And when we moved here, we were somewhat challenged finding organic produce on our side of town. So I uh, got involved with a co-op and a few CSAs that would um, deliver raw organic fruits and vegetables to my door. And I started um, having this abundance of vegetables on my porch and my neighbors took notice. I also was super active socially, had lots of play groups and events at my home. And um, all these moms would come over and they'd ask, you know, why don't you give your kids milk? And why aren't you eating meat? What's, what is this, you know, this faux meat <laughs> that we're eating? And, you know, I just explained to them, you know, why I chose that for our family. And then they would ask me, you know, how do I do it? And so my business grew organically in my home. I was teaching other young mothers how to make nut milk, you know, in your blender. And this is before we all had a Vitamix. And so we blew through a few blenders, <laughs> you know, how to make nut milk in your home and, you know, how to do some of these alternative re recipes. I would just have little luncheons at my home. And um, I just started teaching you know, just, just our friends and, and my kids, you know, friends and their mothers. And what happened was I started getting called out to teach in uh, health food stores and chiropractors offices and doctors offices um, around, you know, locally. So that's how my business started, just teaching in my home. And then it went from my home out into my community. And I started getting involved with lots of farmers and um, people had, who had local produce going on and just helping to kind of connect people. Um, one of my sweet friends, she was wonderful, you know, getting us connected with local farmers, Fully Raw Christina, and she has many awesome recipes. She's inspired me since day one. So definitely peek at her website. It's fullyraw.com, I believe. Um, so that's how my business started, was just in my own home, out in my community, and then there was an organic spa opening up a few miles from my house, and they heard about what I was doing in the community, and they asked me to come teach over there, and um, that's how I became their chef, and I teach there weekly, still today, you know, six years later, and I love it. So, so my business has definitely grown. I'm super excited about that, and I love that I never had to advertise. I just kept doing what I was already doing at home and just would say yes whenever someone asked me to come out and teach in the community. So I feel super blessed to be able to help people in that way. I think that's such a testament to your passion. And he said, it's just grown organically where it sounds like it wasn't a business plan or a model. It was just out of a true desire to help others. And it's just grown over time. Now you mentioned over Deer Lake Lodge that you teach weekly classes there. Are those available to only people staying at the lodge or can local residents sign up for those classes? 
Great question. Local residents can sign up for the for the classes. Um, they would just call over, go to dearlatelodge.com. Um, you can call over there, send in an email, and you can get a day pass. And if you get a day pass, you can come and have a spa service, do yoga, go to a juicing class, or maybe an you know organic cleansing class, lots of different um, offerings over there. Also amazing spa treatments. So yes, they could come just for the day or they can opt to come and stay and cleanse with us for you know, a few days or a week or more. Okay, very cool. And if you guys haven't been there or seen it, it's a beautiful facility. It's tucked away off of 2854 in between Conroe and Montgomery, right off to your Lake Lodge. And it's a really cool place. Now, as I mentioned when I was introducing you, we first met nine years ago, and it sounds like, well, you were going through that journey of um, helping and teaching others. And when I heard the term raw, because I know some of our listeners may be like me initially, they hear the word raw, and they're like these different images of salad or maybe raw sushi coming to mind. What is raw eating? Great question. So um, if we're eating raw, then we're eating our fruits and veggies um, in their pure state or their pure form. So, and hopefully closest to their pick date, right? So when an apple is on the tree, um, it's still alive. And then when it's picked, what happens is it starts to lose its enzymes. It starts, the dying process starts. And uh, just like, you know, fruits or veggies, our bodies, when we're babies and we're born, we're born with massive amounts of enzymes. And as we start to age, we're losing those enzymes at a rapid rate. And so raw foodists are always screaming about enzymes and keeping your temperature down on your food because when we cook our food, we cook the enzymes out. And they used to call it like 118, um, then it went to 109. Uh, 105, I think it's at 102 now, <laughs> uh, technically for it to be considered raw. But the idea is to keep your temperature down so you don't cook the enzymes out. And then if you keep your temperature down in your food prep, whether you're blending it or have it in the food processor or just chopping, or maybe you have it on a very low heat in a dehydrator. Um, that's a whole nother class and that's super fun. You can dehydrate many things at a low temperature if you like crispy crackers and nuts and things like that. So uh, the idea is keeping the temperature down very low so that it's considered raw. And then if you're doing nuts and seeds, we would always soak them. Um, even some grains, uh, legumes or beans, we would soak them overnight. Um, that will help help to activate the enzymes, but it will also help you to digest that. Because sometimes um, certain foods, uh, nuts and seeds and legumes can be quite challenging to digest. And so we really do have to soak them. Oh, we lost your picture for a moment. Oh, there you are. Okay. You're back. Yay. Now, you, you've used the word enzymes, and some of our listeners may not be as familiar with what those are. Why are enzymes so important in the food we eat? Because they give us life. So raw food is living food. So we choose to bring more life back into our body. And that really does go back to where your food is picked. If it's, we're in Texas, and it's driving on a truck from Washington or California, they're going to pick it before it's ripe, and then it's gonna drive on a truck, it's gonna end up in a store, it's gonna have to get rotated into the front of the store when they sell everything on the produce floor. That's why it's really awesome for us to support our, lo our local farmers, our local CSAs and co-ops, our farmers markets, because then we can actually um, get our food when it's closest to its pick date. Okay, it, it's, there's a big difference between eating to eat, which I think in our culture, unfortunately, that's just if you have a gathering, we have food. If you're watching a sports event, you have food. It's just we have lots of food. And I think culturally in America, we've become accustomed to eating just to eat as opposed to eating to fuel our body. And it sounds like the, the more raw food, the enzyme-rich foods help to fuel and give our body the nutrition it needs as opposed to just eating to eat. Have you seen that as well? Absolutely. And if you can do like just a few simple things like start sprouting at home, you can get living food right 
off your kitchen counter, you know, every couple of days. We sprout wheatgrass and we juice it at home. We have um, mung bean sprouts, sunflower seed sprouts, broccoli sprouts. This is living food that you can get into your diet right away. It's super easy to do. You can get the kids involved in sprouting. It's fun, easy, um, and it tastes great. And it's going to give you so much fuel. It's going to make you feel energized first thing in the morning. You might not need that cup of coffee. Okay. Very cool. What would be for those of our listeners and those watching who are like, hey, this is really interesting. I want to start eating healthier. What are some basic first steps that someone can take? So the first steps at this time, hopefully most of us are kind of in that first step, is to stop eating out, right? Because we really can't control what the oil, the, um, the fat, the sugar, or the salt that they put in food when we eat out, unless we know it's a really clean restaurant. Um, the first step is to stop eating out. And I think a lot of us right now in this time have already done that. So we're already a step ahead. And then the next step is to stop bringing garbage into the house. You know, soda, things with corn syrup, um, things with hydrogenated oil, chips, you know, um, a lot of our items that might not be the best ever for our health, to stop bringing those things into the house. And if you do that and you just get in the habit of having healthy food at home, um, you'll be surprised at how much energy you have and how quickly your health changes. You know, we feel better when we know every ingredient that's going in our food. And we feel better when we go through our pantry and we just start cleaning it out, get rid of all those bad oils, um, bad salts, bad sugars, just kind of get rid of those and start to bring in good things. Um, and there's so many great websites and so much great information out there where you can learn about better ingredients and things that you can just switch up. There's that old expression, you are what you eat. And I would joke with my yes. patients years back saying, you are what you buy, because if you don't buy that gallon of ice cream, you won't eat it at midnight. Um, if all there is is fresh fruit and vegetables, that's all you're going to eat at midnight when you, so very, very good tip. And for those of you who don't know, April does grocery store tours. It's one of the services that she offers. And a few months back, my wife said, Hey, I really want to learn more about eating healthy, preparing healthier meals for our family. And so she reached out to April and did a grocery tour and just absolutely loved it. When I got home that evening, she was so excited to share, even though we have four kids, my wife's been to the grocery store thousands of times, like many of you. She learned so much from that time you spent there. And uh, again, it, it just was really beneficial for our family. For, mm -hmm. for our audience today, is there, is there any simple, and I'm putting you on the spot here, so it's okay if there's not. Are there any simple recipes that's, that you could share just with a few ingredients that someone could do? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so let me just comment real quick on the grocery store tour. If you're not local and you're, you know, you're watching online and you're not able to book a grocery store tour, um, just remember this. If it's on TV, it's not for me. Anything that we see a commercial for is probably not the best product that we are choosing to bring into our house, in our house and help our families to upgrade their health. Okay, so just remember that. Most people have um, been watching commercials, um, and if you think of the commercials that you see, it's a lot of really bad food. So if, if you're going to watch TV, mute the commercials or fast forward through them, and try not to buy the um, products that you see a commercial for, um, because pro people literally have been programmed. TV is programming to be sick. And so we're choosing to upgrade our health. And so we're going to really detach from that system and we're going to flow um, differently. So a few uh, a quick recipes that you could do. Um, the first one is make your own almond milk. Or if you're choosing to use really any nut you could use or seed, you could use hemp, you could use sunflower. Um, and just a few easy things is if you have a blender, you just throw you know, a handful or two handfuls of nuts in a blender and maybe four cups of water, a little pinch of vanilla, a little pinch of some sort of real salt um, in there. You blend that up and then strain it with either a nut milk bag. You can go to um, 
let's see, I think it's called sproutpeople.com has an awesome nut milk bag. They also have all the sprouting things I was telling you about. Um, and you can just strain that with a nut milk bag, put it in the fridge. It's delicious. You can have that with cereal. Um, you can use that as an alternative for your recipes instead of cow's milk. Um, and it's going to reduce inflammation and mucus buildup in your body. Um, if you just switch out your nut milk, just, just do that. And if for some reason you don't think you have time, um, you can also, you know, you can get a clean nut milk in the store. There's a brand called Malk, M-A-L-K, and that would be the cleanest one available on the market. Another recipe is, um, is a green alkaline smoothie. And you're just going to take like eight veggies and throw it in your blender, um, add water, and that would be herbs. So hopefully you have some herbs growing outside and you can just go out on your porch and pick herbs, bring them in. If not, you can find them organic at the store, always organic. Um, grab maybe some celery, some cucumber, some kale or spinach, always switch up your greens, throw them in a blender and blend it up with water and then you can drink that fiber daily because our body really does require lots of fiber. But one trick that I tell people is that first glass that you have, strain it, hold the fiber, get the juice in the body without the fiber. Your body's gonna be able to absorb all those nutrients, right? Without having to try to digest that fiber. And then the next, um, throughout the day, drink that whole blender full of vegetables all throughout the day. Let it be the first thing that you drink in the morning and the last thing you drink before you go to bed. Um, and, and drink all the fiber. And sometimes it's challenging for people to get it down if it's too thick, so always add water to it. And that would be a clean water. The most important upgrade that we can make is to upgrade our water immediately. Make sure that we have a filter that's filtering out not just chlorine, but fluoride. Okay, so fluoride-free toothpaste and a fluoride-free water. So spring water, well water, some sort of living water is going to be key. Never plastic water, not in a plastic bottle. Okay, excellent tips. Very, very excellent tips. You know, one thing after my wife did the grocery store tour, she's April's been coming to our house usually during the day while I'm here at the office, but in teaching my wife and my children healthy recipes these past months. And there have been some really delicious meals um, that we've been able to prepare. One was uh, it was raw tacos. And I want to say, was it walnut meat? And my wife yes. didn't tell me. My wife did not tell me. She said, hey, we're having tacos tonight. And it tasted like ground beef. It looked like ground beef. Of course, the kids were giggling the whole time, so I wasn't sure what was going on. Uh, but it tasted absolutely wonderful. And afterwards, they said, hey, this is actually walnuts. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've been able to incorporate – we're still a meat-eating family. Like I, I know many of you are like, hey, I can't go all the way. Hey, wherever you're at, just start somewhere. But for us, we started incorporating multiple times a week when we'll have like a no meat day where for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we'll just prepare more healthy, organic, raw meals as April's taught my wife. And they're very fulfilling because at first I was worried that I'd be hungry and it wouldn't satisfy me. But just the opposite, I feel full, I feel satisfied, I feel energized. And so healthy eating, the myth I think is healthy eating is not taste good. In reality, healthy eating tastes better and is more fulfilling once you actually start going down that path. April, we're, we're just about out of time. Any final health tips or words of wisdom you'd like to share to our audience today? Thank you so much. I appreciate you inviting me to come and share with your community. And um, my last tip is intuitive eating, um, intuitive parenting, intuitive life. You know, really just go within, maybe do your daily meditation connect to source and um and figure out how to flow in um almost everything that's that's different from what we've been taught and really flow at your own vibration and really um get into that place where you just know that you know that you know and um it is sometimes challenging because the world can be extremely distracting but if we push the world out which i think a lot of us have done right now and we go within, we have the answers. We always have the answers. Great advice, great advice. You know, there's, there's something that I think 
people refer to as mother's intuition, but I think every human has that innate intuition of what's right, what's wrong, what their body needs and so forth. So it kind of sounds like you're saying the more that we can be in tune with that, that maybe innate or that, that internal part of us and really listen to that, um, very rarely, if ever, does lead us astray. So great, great advice. April, if someone wants to connect with you to learn more, what are the best ways that they can contact you right now? Thank you. You can go to oceansofabundance.com. Oceans of Abundance. And that's my website. And you can find Instagram. You can shoot me a DM. I'm, um, I'll get right back to you. And you can ask any questions. I'm happy to answer any questions that people have. Thank Excellent. you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for making the time today. I know you're busy. And uh, wish you the best in health to all of our audience out there. We wish you the best in health for you and your loved ones. And Stay safe and be well.